Identified as the spiritual leader of the group behind the Sri Lankan Easter massacres, authorities now say he died in one of the suicide attacks. Zaharan Hashim shown here in images released by ISIS. He practiced what he preached, here telling followers that all non-Muslims should be killed. Zaharan Hashim's murderous ideology put down roots here in Katankudi, a mainly Muslim town on the island's east. Local Muslims say the seeds came from the Gulf region. Sri Lankan police say more suspects from the Easter Sunday bombings are at large, and people here are so fearful of the radical ideology that no one will appear on camera. This Sufi community says that it has borne the brunt of resistance against what they say is an infection of extremist ideology imported from the Gulf and reinforced, they say, with a lot of extra money. They say that this has resulted in violence against them. Their homes have been burned, their offices have been machine gunned, and a clash between their supporters and those of Zaharan resulted in his arrest and later in him going into hiding. That was two years ago. But Sufis, as practitioners of mystical Islam, remain afraid. Zaharan founded this unofficial mosque. He recruited followers here until he was expelled for inciting violence and went underground. We've been to the offices of this mosque, to the home uh, of the director. Nobody is talking to us. Indeed, locals are afraid to speak to us too, but they do say that youngsters love coming here because they can't speak the Arabic of the Quran. They come here for an interpretation. They say the problem is that that interpretation is an extremist vision. Early warning uh, of the attacks. Let's he somehow made contacts with an ISIS member, now arrested in India, who told Indian intelligence of his plot to kill tourists and Christians. These details were relayed to Sri Lanka in April. His name also appears again in a Sri Lankan police alert on April the 11th. His brother, now on the run, is also identified in the police memo as a plotter. We traced his address. The brother's name is on the water bill. Again and again we're encountering people who knew Zaharan or knew his brother. This family and other neighbours have confirmed that uh, they did live in the house uh, just down the road here. They're saying they were very, very unpleasant neighbours and there were altercations between the adults in the Zaharan household and some of the children here. These children were hit. Zaharan continued to preach online and somehow recruited wealthy followers in the capital as suicide bombers. Now this guy, Zaharan, he's the guy who is um, um, giving them the idea, ideology, and when he talks to people, they get convinced. This is his last video appearance, moments before he detonated. One of the two bombers who killed Americans, Britons and many others in the Shangri-La Hotel. He was caught on CCTV. But Sri Lankan authorities have no explanation of how a notorious salesman of violence was not caught in person. Sam Kiley, CNN, Katakudi, Sri Lanka.